Psychohistory is an amalgam of psychology, history, and related social sciences and the humanities. It examines the why of history, especially the difference between stated intention and actual behavior. Psychobiography, childhood, group dynamics, mechanisms of psychic defense, dreams, and creativity are primary areas of research. It works to combine the insights of psychology, especially psychoanalysis, with the research methodology of the social sciences and humanities to understand the emotional origin of the behavior of individuals, groups and nations, past and present. An incredible amount of work in the field has been done in the areas of childhood, creativity, dreams, family dynamics, overcoming adversity, personality, political and presidential psychobiography. There are major psychohistorical studies of studies of anthropology, art, ethnology, history, politics and political science, and much else. Topic. Description Psychohistory derives many of its concepts from areas that are perceived to be ignored by conventional historians and anthropologists as shaping factors of human history, in particular, the effects of parenting practice and child abuse. According to conventional historians, the science of culture is independent of the laws of biology and psychology. And T. He determining cause of a social fact should be sought among social facts preceding and not among the states of individual consciousness. Psychohistorians, on the other hand, suggest that social behavior such as crime and war may be a self destructive reenactment of earlier abuse and neglect, that unconscious flashbacks to early fears and destructive parenting could dominate individual and social behavior. Psychohistory relies heavily on historical biography. Notable examples of psychobiographies are those of Louis Namir, who wrote about the British House of Commons, and Fawn Brody, who wrote about Thomas Jefferson. Topic. Areas of study There are three inter-related areas of psychohistorical study. 1. The history of childhood, which looks at such questions as how have children been raised throughout history? How has the family been constituted? How and why have practices changed over time? The changing place and value of children in society over time. How and why our views of child abuse and neglect have changed? 2. Psychobiography, which seeks to understand individual historical people and their motivations in history. 3. Group psychohistory, which seeks to understand the motivations of large groups, including nations, in history and current affairs. In doing so, psychohistory advances the use of group fantasy analysis of political speeches, political cartoons and media headlines since the loaded terms, metaphors and repetitive words therein offer clues to unconscious thinking and behaviors. Topic. Emergence as a discipline Sigmund Freud's well-known work, Civilization and its Discontents 1929, included an analysis of history based on his theory of psychoanalysis. Yet, Freud's text is in no way a psycho-historical work since the focus of the study is to examine and explain the level of individual psyche which may arise from the influence of the structures of civilization. It is in fact the opposite of psycho-history in that it claims that the unconscious and the individual psyche are both structural effects of different social forces, i.e., civilization. Wilhelm Reich combined his psychoanalytic and political theories in his book The Mass Psychology of Fascism in 1933. The psychologist and philosopher Eric Frum wrote about the psychological motivation behind political ideology, starting with the fear of freedom in 1941. Another member of the Frankfurt School, Theodor Adorno, published The Authoritarian Personality, in 1950, which was an influential sociological book which could be taken as something of a proto-psychohistorical book. Its first academic use appeared in Eric Erikson's book Young Man Luther, 1958, where the author called for a discipline of psycho-history to examine the impact of human character on history. 
Lloyd Demas developed a formal psychohistorical approach from 1974 onwards, and continues to be an influential theorist in this field. Topic: Independence as a discipline. Psychohistorians have argued that psychohistory is a separate field of scholarly inquiry with its own particular methods, objectives and theories, which set it apart from conventional historical analysis and anthropology. Some historians, social scientists and anthropologists have, however, argued that their disciplines already describe psychological motivation and that psychohistory is not, therefore, a separate subject. Others regard it as an undisciplined field of study, due to its emphasis given to speculation on the psychological motivations of people in history. Doubt has also been cast on the viability of the application of post mortem psychoanalysis by Freud's followers. Psychohistorians maintain that the difference is one of emphasis and that, in conventional study, narrative and description are central, while psychological motivation is hardly touched on. Psychohistorians accuse most anthropologists and ethnologists of being apologists for incest, infanticide, cannibalism and child sacrifice. They maintain that what constitutes child abuse is a matter of objective fact, and that some of the practices which mainstream anthropologists apologize for e sacrificial rituals, may result in psychosis, dissociation and magical thinking, particularly for the surviving children who had a brother or sister who was sacrificed by their parents. Topic. Psychogenic mode Lloyd DeMoz has described a system of psychogenic modes see below, which describe the range of styles of parenting he has observed historically and across cultures. Psychohistorians have written much about changes in the human psyche through history, changes that they believe were produced by parents, and especially the mother's increasing capacity to empathize with their children. Due to these changes in the course of history, different psychoclasses or psychogenic modes emerged. A psychoclass is a type of mentality that results from, and is associated with, a particular childrearing style, and in its turn influences the method of childrearing of the next generations. According to psychohistory theory, regardless of the changes in the environment, it is only when changes in childhood occur and new psychoclasses evolve that societies begin to progress. The major psychogenic modes described by Damas are Psychohistorians maintain that the five modes of abusive childrearing excluding the helping mode are related to psychiatric disorders from psychoses to neuroses. The chart below shows the dates at which these modes are believed to have evolved in the most advanced nations, based on contemporary accounts from historical records. A black and white version of the chart appears in Foundations of Psychohistory. The y-axis on the above chart serves as an indicator of the new stage and not a measurement of the stage's size or relation to the x-axis. The timeline doesn't apply to hunter-gatherer societies. It doesn't apply either to the Greek and Roman world, where there was a wide variation in childrearing practices. It is notable that the arrival of the ambivalent mode of child rearing preceded the start of the Renaissance mid -14th century by only one or two generations, and the arrival of the socializing mode coincided with the Age of Enlightenment, which began in the late 18th century. Earlier forms of child rearing coexist with later modes, even in the most advanced countries. An example of this are reports of selective abortion and sometimes exposure of baby girls especially in China, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, India, Pakistan, New Guinea, and many other developing countries in Asia and North Africa, regions in which millions of women are missing. The conflict of new and old psychoclasses is also highlighted in psychohistorians' thought. This is reflected in political contrasts, for instance, in the clash between blue state and red state voters in the contemporary United States, and in civil wars. Another key psychohistorical concept is that of group fantasy, which Damas regards as a mediating force between a psychoclass's collective childhood experiences and the psychic conflicts emerging therefrom, and the psychoclass's behavior in politics, religion and other aspects of social life. Topic. A psychoclass for postmodern times 
According to the psychogenic theory, since Neanderthal man most tribes and families practiced infanticide, child mutilation, incest and beating of their children throughout prehistory and history. Presently the Western socializing mode of childrearing is considered much less abusive in the field, though this mode is not yet entirely free of abuse. In the opening paragraph of his seminal essay, The Evolution of Childhood, first article in the History of Childhood, Damas states, the history of childhood is a nightmare from which we have only recently begun to awaken. The further back in history one goes, the lower the level of childcare, and the more likely children are to be killed, abandoned, beaten, terrorized and sexually abused. There is notwithstanding an optimistic trait in the field. In a world of helping mode, parents, Damas believes, violence of any other sort will disappear as well, along with magical thinking, mental disorders, wars and other inhumanities of man against man. Although, the criticism has been made that this itself is a form of magical thinking. Criticisms <coughs> 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 There are no departments dedicated to psychohistory in any institution of higher learning, although some history departments have run courses in it. Psychohistory remains a controversial field of study, facing criticism in the academic community, with critics referring to it as a pseudoscience. Psychohistory uses a plurality of methodologies, and it is difficult to determine which is appropriate to use in each circumstance. Damas has received criticism on several levels. His formulations have been criticized for being insufficiently supported by credible research. He has also received criticism for being a strong proponent of the black legend view of childhood history i.e. that the history of childhood was above all a history of progress, with children being far more often badly mistreated in the past. Similarly, his work has been called a history of child abuse, not childhood. The grim perspective of childhood history is known from other sources, e.g. Edward Shorter's The Making of the Modern Family and Lawrence Stone's The Family, Sex and Marriage in England 1500-1800. However, Damas received criticism for his repeated, detailed descriptions on childhood atrocities. The reader is doubtless already familiar with examples of these psychohistorical abuses. There is a significant difference, however, between the well-meaning and serious, if perhaps simplistic and reductionistic, attempt to understand the psychological in history and the psychohistorical expose that can at times verge on historical pornography. For examples of the more frivolous and distasteful sort of psychohistory, see Journal of Psychohistory. For more serious and scholarly attempts to understand the psychological dimension of the past, see the Psychohistory Review. Recent psychohistory has also been criticized for being overly entangled with Damas, whose theories are not representative of the entire field. Topic. Organizations Boston University offers a psychohistory course at the undergraduate level and has published course details. The, the Association for Psychohistory was founded by Lloyd Damas. It has 19 branches around the globe and has for over 30 years published the Journal of Psychohistory. The International Psychohistorical Association was also founded by Damas and others in 1977 as a professional organization for the field of psychohistory. It publishes psychohistory news and has a psychohistorical mail-order lending library. The association hosts an annual convention, the Psychohistory Forum, publishes the quarterly journal Clio's Psyche. It was founded in 1983 by historian and psychoanalyst Paul H. Elevitz. This organization of academics, therapists, and laypeople holds regular scholarly meetings in New York City and at international conventions. It also sponsors an online discussion group. In Germany, scientists taking an interest in psychohistory met annually since 1987. In 1992, the Gesellschaft für Psychohistory und Politische Psychologie e. v. Society for Psychohistory and Political Psychology was founded. This society issues the Jarbeck für Psychohistorische Forschung Annual of Psychohistorical Research. Topic: Notable Psychohistorians. 
Lloyd de Maas, founder of the Institute for Psychohistory. Peter Gay, Sterling Professor at Yale University, author. Robert J. Lifton, a psychiatrist specializing in psychological motivations for war and terrorism. Topic. See also Bicameralism psychology, Child murder Helicopter parent Historicism Non-aggression principle Parenting Poisonous pedagogy Psychohistorical views on infanticide Religious abuse Trauma model of mental disorders Topic Notes Topic Bibliography Demas, Lloyd, nineteen seventy five. A Bibliography of Psychohistory. New York, Garland Pub. ISBN O eight two four O nine 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 O Demas, Lloyd, nineteen seventy five. The New Psychohistory. New York, Psychohistory Press. ISBN 0 914434 one 2 Lloyd, 1982. Foundations of Psychohistory. New York, Creative Roots. ISBN 0-940508-01-X. Archived from the original on 20 October 2002. Demas, Lloyd, 1984. Reagan's America. New York, Creative Roots. ISBN 0-940508-02-8. Demas, Lloyd, 2002. The Emotional Life of Nations, Publisher, Other Press, ISBN 1-892746-98-0, available online at no cost. Ebel, Henry, Demas, Lloyd, 1977. Jimmy Carter and American Fantasy, Psychohistorical Explorations. New York, Two Continents. ISBN 0-8467-0363-7. Lawton, Henry W., The Psychohistorian's Handbook, New York, Psychohistory Press, ISBN 0-914434-27-6-1989, Lowenberg, Peter, Decoding the Past, The Psychohistorical Approach, Transaction Pub, ISBN 1-56000-846-6-2002 Stannard, David E., Shrinking History, On Freud and the Failure of Psychohistory, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0-19-503044-3-1980 A Critique of the Freudian Approach to Psychohistory Shaluda, Jacques, Psychohistory, Theory and Practice, Publisher Peter Lang, ISBN 0-8204-1741-6, 1999. External links The Institute for Psychohistory. This website contains over 1,500 pages of psychohistorical articles and books. International Psychohistorical Association. The professional organization for the field of psychohistory. Clio's Psyche and the Psychohistory Forum, Psychological and Historic and Insight Without Jargon. German Society for Psychohistorical Research in German. The Institute for Social Psychohistory. Promotes research into and advocates for the field of social psychohistory.